welcome to another review and unboxing and this time we look at defender of the crown collector's edition the extended one apart from the one i bought he also sent us one for a review so thanks again to sven fessing for that sven fessing has been interviewed by us we once interviewed him for our podcast where we spoke about his work for cinemaware so let's have a look that's a pretty box from the front. Now let's turn it around and you see it from the side and from the back side. And as you can see down there, every version, every box is sealed on the top and on the bottom. That is something he mentioned in the newsletter. So let's remove the seal. As you can see, the seal is pretty strong, so you cannot simply reattach it or something okay so once that's removed let's open the box and let's see what's inside the box so you see inside the box are the CDs the first CD is The Amiga CD32 and PC Mac version. And then there's one for the Amiga CTV and for the Amiga CD32. So as he promised, you can play it natively on all systems that feature CD1. Also, you can see there are stickers in it and postcards yes so if you want to send your friends some postcards from defender of the crown now you can and there are three four pretty ones actually yeah very nice very nice and there's also a personal letter by it's my first thing attached where he thanks you for um ordering it and what it meant to him and also some instructions on, well, how to use the versions outside of um, the menu system on a native C64 or Vice emulator. So you can also get all emulated versions of the games straight from the CD. Also, as you can see down the page, he also mentions that you can get updates via the update function or you can get the full soundtrack included as an mp3 format there are the manuals as pdf and so on and so forth yes and there is a real collector's edition manual that's really nice because that's pretty rare nowadays to have a full manual there yeah and also as you can see some poster amazing we will take a look to that a little bit later and there's also some promotion in it from the good old um, titles they used to have back in the day. Pretty neat. Pretty nice. Very nice. Very nice. So you see, you get really a lot for your money. And now let's see how the game collection actually performs on a real computer. That's from my computer. And as you can see, there's a pretty neat menu and a pretty interesting version. And let's have a look at the first version here. Ah, uh, that's pretty neat.
In the year 1192, when King Richard the Lionhearted was returning to England from the Crusades, he was captured by his enemy, Leopold of Austria. Richard's brother, Prince John, is not willing to help, but four great knights have stepped forward to try to free the king. Wilfrid of Ivanhoe, one of England's best in the tournaments. Cedric of Rotherwood, a leader of men and a skilled negotiator. Geoffrey Longsword, whose swordsmanship is legendary. And Wolfric the Wild, the great leader in the battlefield. Let's take Which Wilfred. of these should be chosen as Richard's champion? Wilfred of Ivanhoe, it is your task to raise the £20,000 sterling necessary to free the king. Decide to travel first to Sherwood Forest to ask for the aid of your old friend Robin of Locksley. Robin promises to help you three times during your quest if you should need him. This is your home territory from which you will launch your campaign. These are territories owned by other knights. Most of them are loyal to Prince John and will not be sympathetic to your cause. Good luck. What are your orders, sire? So let's look at another version, and that's the CCC4 version. That's the one I remember as a child. And uh, that's the pretty typical music I remember from my childhood. Really, very cool. As you can see, it's a Paul emulation enabled with. Uh, scan lines, pretty neat. One thing I've noticed is it's using keyboard controls as default. I could also use the G64 and convert it to a real diskette and use it on my real G64. Well, that's pretty neat. All the ROM files and disk images are natively used. Alright, so let's get to some more action here and let's select a tournament on the map. That's one of the things I like the most. Ah, that music. Back in the day, this was also called um, true life quality, the pictures. So I'm not very good with the keyboard, I have to say. Yeah. Too bad. 
second try. Let's look on the ZTGV version. Let's look at another version here. That takes a bit of loading. Similar a retro percent. That's pretty neat. So actually, they exchange some intros at some version of the game to reflect that it's now similar to retro. That's the exact Amiga version, I believe. And that's also the last version I will look at. Unfortunately, I was not able to look at the DOS version because it wouldn't run on my computer. I don't know why, but I hope they will figure it out and will get back to me. Because I would really like to um, have a look at the DOS version as well. sounds like it. That's this pretty neat um, Amiga version. So never mind. Well, lost instantly. Too bad. So anyway, that's a pretty neat collection and I have to say I really recommend it for anybody who loves Defender of the Crown. It's really very well done, so thumbs up for that and I can only highly recommend it for anybody who ever wanted to play any possible version of Defender of the Crown. Thank you.